Good morning from Slap City. It's windy today. There's nothing I can do about it. Hopefully the audio won't be too bad. Um, we're about to go get a cup of coffee. Send your ears, send your hands, send your movements, anything you can. Come to teach, come to be taught, come in the likeness and the image of God. Cause you can be like that, with all that humbleness and all that respect. All the power invested in me. Be part of my enemies, all the black bags. Over the heads of the dead and dying The more I understand about the human race The less I comprehend about our purpose and place And maybe there was a clearer line The curiosity would satisfy Maybe for someone who's never heard of this place before, what is the Oasis Club? We are, we're, we're uh, technically, I guess, a snowboard club that's open from Halloween to Easter. And, uh, this, this is uh, no drama, a uh, safe neutral zone, you know. Yeah. Don't have drama. Yeah. And so coffee from 7 to 10 in the morning? 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning every day of the week. And then I see, and then the schedule up there. There's live music tonight, which is Wednesday. Acoustic nights every Wednesday night here. Uh huh. And we start sunset. Everything sunset. Breakfast we have on Sundays, and that's nine-ish. We institute the ish aspect. Of sure. Thursday. Punctuality is Our stronger features are, you know, we're reliable. From just being here, you know, one morning, hanging out, this seems to be the social place of uh, the morning. I, I love, I love mornings here because of the energy. I mean, we have pretty guys start good energy. Uh, wide range. We have, like, pretty much representatives from most of, like, the major camps that do things, you know, like uh, Katamari or, or Mojo's camp or, you know, uh, each, even each Jesus, so, I mean, they come straight up uh, uh, from camp. They all, they all come in here. So th this is definitely a local spot. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of yeah. cool that people, yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Nice. And then in the summertime, after all the snowbird leaves, and when I was kids, there are snowbirds. Yep. And once they all leave, that's when the core community, and then having a place to hang out at least once a week for a part of the summer. And yeah. It's the first time last summer. See what go and that was some of the strongest coffee I've had this morning. It's, we, we do uh, pride ourselves on our coffee making good. Prophecies that kept me from living in the moment I am struggling to trust the divinity of all the guys. And what the hell they have planned for us. I crap for the creatures who get at the eye. But everything will change in the blink of an eye. And if you wish to survive, you will find the guy inside. All right, we're indoors. It's a little bit less windy. Uh, we had a very amazing time at the Oasis Club for our morning coffee, and we met the coffee master himself, Sai. Um, and so Sai has been here. Let me close this window real quick. Sai has been a resident of Slab City for how long? Uh, somewhere between five and six years. Although one and a half years, I was gone. Uh, yeah. It was supposed to be a road trip for three months, turned to New Year and a half. Yeah. But uh, I'm back now. So, so, sir, so I've, I've been here for about like, like yeah. four or five years. So you're you're years, a local resident. Yeah. Local resident. So what do you? What in your opinion is uh, the your favorite part about Slab City? I guess. Um. Besides the Oasis Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Oasis Club has been like my uh, my morning ritual every single day. If uh, I work on Wednesdays and there's other volunteers for the other days. But I'm there every single morning, whether it's my work day or not. Yeah. And like, I have no problem filling in if someone's sick or if someone doesn't want to work. Or yeah. Yeah. But uh, my like my other favorite part, uh, my, like my favorite uh, days would be like Saturdays, where it's the range where you know anyone can go up. It's open mic. Anyone can go up and play whatever music they want. They can play music from their phone and sing to it or whatever. Oh, cool. Um, there's some people. Uh, there was one guy who came over. He uh, did stand up comedy. Um, it's just all open mic. Uh, that that's a nice uh, day where like people can enjoy music, all different kinds of music from different people, and it's where like the majority of the the community can actually get together and see people because some people don't like to get out. Yep. They like to stay home. 
and they don't want to go and visit their buddy all the way across the other side of Slabs. So, right. You know, Saturday's the perfect time to get everyone yep. together. And I'm going to turn around and show everybody we are actually parked at the range. If you guys seen Into the Wild, this is the uh, open mic night uh, talent show type of thing. And, and you know, if you, you've been here, you've probably driven by, but uh, Sai has been nice enough to uh, offer to drive us around. So we're going to take a quick tour, check out some cool spots and uh, more behind the scenes which you wouldn't really see on Instagram or glamorized in social media. All right, so Sai has taken us over to an interesting place behind us. This is the... Uh, this is the Laughing Dog Cafe or the Internet Cafe. Um, every morning they have uh, coffee from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Hello. Hi. Yes, I love you. Wagon, wagon, wagon. <laughs> um, they have uh, coffee every morning and they have internet, uh, Wi-Fi each day. The password usually changes. You have to ask for the password, and uh, you can come and plug in and charge your, you know, your electronics and hook up on the internet. Cool. You're never gonna believe this, but somebody recognized me at the slabs. Do you live here? Yes, I do. How long you been living here? Uh, almost two years. And you and you said you recognized me from when? From since the yellow bus, uh, I guess in 2018. There you go, man. Uh, early 2018. Yep. My school bus just behind us. Where? Um, it's. Behind the, the pirate camp here. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, I've been following you since then. And um, when you started to do the voice video, I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's been a 25 year dream of mine. Yeah. Now yeah. that I'm off the sauce. And, and, and what, good. what's your what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Flux. Flux. Well, I go by Flux out here. Yeah, no, I understand. We're we're getting into the whole how it works, the dynamic. Everybody has a Slab City nickname, so right, right. Flux. Very nice to meet you, yeah, man. Yeah. We're gonna tour from Psy. And we were over at the uh, Oasis Club Oasis for breakfast. Right yeah, yep, yep, yeah. So I used to buy some there last year. Nice. There you go. So we're just kind of getting beyond the, you know, the touristy stuff. The coming, you see the East Jesus, the Salvation Mountain, and right. we're talking to people who live here, like yourself, and Sai, and, and getting to know the bike shop and the internet cafe and the other right places on, like right that. On, you know? Yeah. yeah. Getting a little bit deeper than the surface. Right. Right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. Right on. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for saying hello. Yeah. You too, Jax. Yeah. All right. Sure, man. Right on. We'll see you around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you own Bill's Bike Shop? Yes, sir. How long you been out here? A year and a half. Do you like it? I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? Uh, but, you know, sometimes, you know, I was living in Phoenix. It's against the law of people. Okay. And they started to lock me up. So I decided I didn't want that. I heard about this place, came up here, brought me some money. I didn't know what to expect. I brought 30 beers, two gallons of water. What a mistake. But anyways... I bought the bike shop, and I've been going ever since. That's, that's great. And uh, how's the business? This year, a little slow. When I got it last year, you know, I don't know. It's been it's been a struggle this year. Yeah. But I have a lot of, you know, I buy, sell, trade. Yeah. What I do. I'm not a collector or anything. I yeah. just, uh, you know, it's about taking care of the kids. Yeah. I've done a lot of wrong in my life, and I'm a very bad person. Now through the kids, they don't pay for nothing. I make sure if their bike's broke, they don't have one, they get one. Uh, and then if you're a true slabber, after you do uh, two summers, I'll give you a bike. <laughs> right on. I'll give you a bike. Right on. Well, and if you're a true slabber, you can come up here, I'll fix your bike, it don't cost you nothing. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for the inf information. And uh, remember, the Bill, the reason the shop, my name is Charlie, and it's Bill's Bike Shop, this is the guy that started it. So he passed away. When I bought it, that was the agreement that I would keep it Bill's Bike Shop. I don't have an ego trip, no mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's awesome. the reason it's Bill's Bike Shop. And you are located uh, just right of the Internet Cafe? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Most popular place in town. All right. Thanks, Charlie. Stay here with the pirates. Uh, this is Austin's Pallet Palace. I'm not sure if I, I'm, I was told that Austin still stays here. I haven't seen him since I've been back, but he's a really good friend of mine, a really smart guy. Uh, as you can tell, he, he, he loves building stuff and he's really good at it. And um, like, he uses power tools, but he doesn't use power tools like other people. He, he goes out and he goes to like uh, Swamp and he'll collect parts of power tools. He'll actually put them together and get them working again and build battery packs that they can plug into and uh, charge them there. So like, he's always got them charged on solar and he's, he's, he's got a really nice setup here. And with the layers that he's add, added to it, it stays pretty nice and cool in there. Really? Yeah. It, huh. it, it's, it's hard. The, more, the more layers that you add spaced out from each other, the, the, the cooler it is because it keeps, uh, 
you have one layer that takes on the majority of the heat and then you have that air space uh, and the next wall it's like an air gap the next air, and the, the wind will push like, that warm air out. like like a double pane window or something yeah yeah, yeah. interesting so this was all made with uh just scrap pallets and wood and whatever the person scrap would find pallets, wood scrap uh, nails screws and like it's, this is pretty much all done well yeah by hand like I don't know if anyone's helped him out for with it, but like last time I checked, he did the whole thing by himself. <laughs> Interesting. So, if you guys come out to the slabs, look for the uh, flying flag if it's a windy day, the peace sign. Um, otherwise, I would say we're, we're on the tour of all tours of Slab City right now, meeting some interesting people I, very... really, I really wish he was here like i wish you guys could meet him he's, he's a really cool guy yeah i'm sure well austin if you're out there watching very cool i'm very impressed he's actually been here longer than most people in slabs he even though he's you know, younger than me he technically is still considered like a uh, i guess a slab elder yeah, yeah. He's, he's been out here ever since he was like a little kid i go back and forth about every single day the clarity comes to me and chop me away the people change, the galaxies remain. And it feels for a lot of this space. Angels who are couple sing a spiritual ways. The haze to get the physics of my spiritual place. The temple, my dog, with a planetary place. And for a lightning, we're on a side. Like earlier what I was saying, like if you have your own individual camp, people will build like a little house or they'll have a little uh, uh, line around their property or wherever, or their residence. Um, or they'll have a trailer and, uh, and a uh, residence line or property line, however you want to call it. It's communal camps on the other hand, <laughs> usually they'll have like a couple other trailers or a couple of houses or like different areas where people have their own private space. Um, instead of the RV being their home, the RV would be like their room. And then they'll have a, 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 a more communal space like where everyone inside the camp can actually like, hang out uh, wherever and can have uh, visitors over. Like this, the this living room. Here, this one here would be pretty much our, our living room. Guys, this is uh, Zach. Uh, we just met a uh, little bit ago and you grew up in Slab City. Yes, I did. I've been here since I was eight or nine. Um, Watched, watched a lot of different changes in the community. Uh, it went from being a complete anarchist society to more modernized. People are starting real businesses. And it's starting to turn into like a modern society town. Um, they're still more freedom here to express yourself, people who play music or are artists or don't feel comfortable being male or female or homosexual, those things are accepted here. Um, it's a good place to be stuck if you have nothing, you know, there's food, free food, free water, uh, good people just a good place to be. Yeah, and you came down here with your parents, I'm guessing? Yes, I did. My parents own the Ponderosa on the main road. Okay. Um, me and my parents don't really get along. They're a little different than I am. You know, they had different lives than I did growing up. Um, I was basically an animal growing up. I took care of myself, had to worry about where I was going to sleep, what I was going to eat, and things like that. There is lots of violence and drugs and alcohol, but besides those three things, it's pretty good to be here. I mean, this is really the last free place to do what you really want to and not be judged by right. the people around you. And then because you've been here for so long, how did you acquire your own slab here? Uh, this actually all belongs to my older brother. He's not like me. He's super emotional like my father and he built my dad's place for him over the summer, and my dad told him that he could have this place in return. And then when I came home, my dad tried to screw my brother out of the place, and I 
was like, go fuck yourself, pretty much. So I ended up with it. My brother didn't want to stay and deal with all of the drama, so I did I did him. And at some point in time, he'll probably come back, and then I'll be able to go wherever. Mm -hmm. Nice. And, and um... What what was it, what what is it like to live in the slabs or to grow up and live in the slabs? It's a lot different than being in a town or in a city. Uh, there's more sense of community here, more sense of family, more freedom to learn and to do things and experience things that you wouldn't experience anywhere else. Like, I grew up pulling child molesters and rapists off of women and watching people's homes be burned to the ground. It's been very interesting. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm. That is Still true. unlike any other place in the whole country. Spent the past three years traveling, hitchhiking, uh, walked across the country. It took six months. Walked across the whole thing? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. From Sacramento, California to upstate New York. Fucking <laughs> high five for that, bro. That's tough, man. That is not easy. Yeah. Man. And so we are... Six months. That's, that's wild. Mm. That is wild. What are some of the changes that you've seen here? It's starting to calm down. There's better people. Um, more loyalty. A better sense of family than there used to be. Um, Seem, seems like everybody knows everyone here too. Mm, there's a better sense of community. People get along. Instead of people beating each other up and lighting houses on fire, they talk it out instead of fighting it out or getting crazy and shooting somebody or yeah. doing something crazy. Yeah. There's still a lot of drama. Like I said, there's alcohol and drugs. People do dumb shit all the time. Yeah. But other than that, it's pretty chill. Yeah. The summer is a little harder. It's pretty hot. It's 130 degrees outside. People are kind of irritable. Uh, shit can get crazy during the summer. The town kind of shrinks. Only the real locals stay during the summertime. And those people get crazy during the summer. Yeah. That's when people's homes get burned down, people get shot, people get stabbed, mobs are made against people and yeah. stuff. It gets crazy. You ever thought about leaving? I did leave. I'm leaving in maybe another week or two. I mean, leaving for good? No. My whole family lives here. This is my home. This is where I was raised. I'll always come back here. I'm starting a family of my own. I'm gonna have a kid here in another six months. I'll be having a daughter. I have to worry about her and my old lady. Yeah. Take care of business. You know what I mean. Oh, I know. I know. For sure. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was impressive. All right, so you go by Panda. I do. Did someone call you that when you got here? Because I guess that's how people get their names. I had that nickname unofficially for like six, seven years while I was doing all of my prior life circus stuff, like lots of parties and things like that. Everybody just started calling me Panda because I just navigated spaces a certain way. And how did you get into the circus performing? I st Okay, so I lived in South Carolina when I started. Um, once I moved out, I went to Portland. And when I got to Portland, I was homeless for about two, three years. When I, but I got out of it by this wonderful company called the Circus Project. Circus Project worked with at-risk youth and get them off the streets, not necessarily by giving them food or shelter or any of that, but giving them an artistic vision to help motive power to get all the rest of those things. Um, after a eight month circus intensive training course where I worked with people like Stefan first, Jen Copan, and uh, uh, a couple of other ones that I'm really gonna feel bad about for hearing names because they're amazing. Oh, me too, just a rock. Um, all these people came together to do, do really, really excellent training, and we ended up performing at the Portland Art Museum. After that, I went and did things like the Burning Man community, Sideshow community, General Circus community, did a lot of tours through all three of those things. 
After a while, some things and my own personal injuries developed, and so I stepped out of it and became more of like the regular life person, but still did things like burlesque and stuff like that. After a while, still trying to be like that, like that starving artist core, like, oh, I just want to my art, stuff like that. I got really disillusioned with a lot of things that happened out there. Yeah. Like, I remember from my homeless days, seeing the dark side of people and still seeing that same side of people, like a regular like employee working relationships, things like that. And it finally came to a point when I went to Walmart to ask for a job, I literally puked at them because it was just so gritty, terrible feeling to like even consider that. And I walked right out of the interview, left, got my backpack together and left. And after some trails and walking, running around the West Coast, I landed here in Slab City and have been basically and you've been here for how long? Uh, since September. Like the beginning of September. Um, been living at Flamingo Camp the whole time. We've had an excellent time doing the animal rescue and all that kind of stuff. Um, and for those who don't know, what is Flamingo Camp? Because I just learned today. Um, Flamingo Camp. Flamingo Camp Animal Rescue. Uh, we're right by East Jesus. We do stuff like taking stray cats and dogs. Not so much them, but their litters. Um, if any litters are born like that, we'll take those and make sure they get adopted outside of Slab City so they can get like nutrition, medicine, care, or get their space tutoring and all that without relying on the community for that kind of stuff. And also not create more of a dog and cat problem out here. We'll also help give to, to like um, um, like disabled or really low income folks that don't that miss down on like some of the, the perks of the government to get money. Will help give them like water and other animals and stuff like that. But it's getting really windy out here. It really is. <laughs> it's a windstorm today. <laughs> Welcome to Slab. Look at the hail. <laughs> awesome, Panda. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for your story. Yeah, appreciate it. Guys, this is Shane, um, and this is what you call the penthouse, right? Well, my friends do. Yeah, the penthouse suite of the slabs because it overlooks everything. I kind of think of it more as the art castle. I'm trying to like uh, make a place for artists to come and protect their art and stuff. And awesome. Do their thing. And yeah. how many years you've been coming out here to the slabs? Uh, 15, 16, 17. Mm. Not really good. Yep. <laughs> um, years, uh, but yeah, certainly on the list of uh, places I stop at. Trapped yeah. around the United States. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I'll, I'll follow you up here. Yeah, just keep your feet to the sides. Okay. And uh, it's kind of like hopping a wooden fence. You never step in the center of the board. Okay. Way to the outside. I guess it's probably a good time to tell you I'm not so great with heights. Yeah, well, up here it gets even sketchy. <laughs> there's, there's just like a wall we stand on. It's maybe eight inches wide, but... Oh my God. <laughs> Baby, you might freak out. <laughs> There's a ladder goes down the other side. All right. I've been meaning to build a porch here, but I do kind of like that back. It freaks people out, so, you know, half the people go Harder back to Harder to rob. At least I have to worry about thieves and whatnot. Right. All right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, your game, check it out. Okay, one at a time, I guess. This is one of the more challenging things I've done, and I'm not too far up off the ground. But, uh, it's a little nerve wracking. Here. You like the hand, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I did it. I can do this. Alright. No big deal. No big deal. So yeah, guys, we <laughs> no joke. Uh, we are on the edge of the water tank in Slab City. So um okay, let me just <laughs> calm down a minute here. Let me get back into my mode here. Okay, so Shane, you wanted to tell us a brief little something about yourself, whatever you want to share or not. It's totally up to you. Um, yeah, basically, uh, I'm a drifter. I've uh, been doing it my whole life. I bounce from place to place and uh, try to help people when I can. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like help feeding people and um, 
but yeah, Slab City is one of my spots, and it has gotten a lot of misinformation over the years uh, with the YouTubes, you know. Um, but uh, I enjoy it. And yeah, there's really a wonderful community here, and a lot of people never get to see it. Yeah, and it's not the kind of thing you can video. But yeah, what do you think the biggest misconception is about this place? Uh, just that, that it's just tweakers and thieves and nonstop violence, but, um, that's the way they kind of pitch it, but, uh, if you travel America, all your guys' neighborhood has tweakers and thieves in them, <laughs> all of them, even yeah. the wealthier neighborhoods So sure. been around the United States, watched the drugs change, the times change, and, yeah. Yeah, but, that's uh, true, that's true. Sure enough. Yeah, I would agree. I would say that a lot of people... When they say, oh my gosh, traveling around on a school bus is dangerous, what are you doing, you're, something had happened out in the middle of nowhere, and usually I tell people, you know what, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're away from the opportunist, because the opportunists usually hang out in cities and things like that, they're looking for an opportunity. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, and it, everything's perspective, you know? Right. It's like how you see and handle the situation. Yeah. Mostly, I saw see all the nonsense here, and crazy stuff that does go on in the middle of the night when, you know, people are just messed up late at night. Yeah. You know, I see it. It's all here for my entertainment, and I find it fun and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, everything's really a matter of perspective. Yeah. So, um, tell us about your, what you did here. Um, you know, so people are calling this the penthouse of the slabs. Yeah, yeah, the penthouse suite. So, because um, it just up high, it overlooks... Uh, the slabs and has one of the best views around. I really came up here because I like, like to uh, watch uh, um, the war games at night. <laughs> so the military training ground over there and it, the tracer rounds going off and the bombs in the background and it, it, waking up the automatic gunfire in the morning. And so for people who don't know, there's a, a missile range or a testing proving ground on the other side of this where they do military drills and there's a couple fake sort of towns out there where they do their Navy SEAL stuff and yeah. crazy, crazy bombing raids. Sure, sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, let's get, to the, let's get to the penthouse here. So I'm guessing this is the bedroom here. Um, yeah, pretty we, cozy looking bed. All right, I, I put the big window with uh, sunsets back here, and that's uh, the Coliseum back here. My neighbor DNA's place, and uh -huh. he welded uh, stair steps for people. A nice piece of artwork over there, but so you get the sunset and over the Salton Sea, and yeah, um, yeah, see all around and watch. Uh, Who's coming in and out? And go yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got OSB two by fours, and then behind you over here is your kitchen or uh, dining room area, I guess you could call it. Right. Yeah, I found all the windows and the cushions um, in the garbage are cheap at a a flea thing, and so uh, I was gonna build a couch, but then I was like, well, I can do. Like the RV style, you know. Yeah. The table drops down, and you can put the cushions down. This becomes a bed. Oh, cool! Awesome. Yeah. So obviously, someone would have to have the nerve to uh, climb up the ladder to get uh, right, <laughs> to, right, to right, stay right, at your place. Right, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's on the list. Uh, yeah, I, I I gotta make. I'm thinking it's about building a porch out there. I just kind of like the fact. Yeah. <laughs> People <laughs> get nervous coming down there. It's kind of a detail. Yeah, it made me nervous, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then over here, obviously, you know, a place to hang some clothes and, you know, living room area, I guess you could say. And well, this is cool. How long do you think this structure will last here? Uh, it'll last as long as I'm here. And that's why I was going to put a full bathroom in it. But as soon as I'm gone, you know, um, squatters will move in and, um, you know, it could get stripped of everything. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be really hard for them because I screwed all the wood in. I used screws. Everything's screwed together. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, uh, yeah. So just, <laughs> but is that kind of how it goes? Once it, once yeah, you leave your camp, it's sort of, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. People see it as abandoned property and theirs to just... Yeah. Take so. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can or yep. you know, see what happens. Yep. 
Well, this you is. Don't want to invest too much more effort yeah. into it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's certainly basic. certainly impressive. I mean, what you've done. You got you know kitchen area over here and you know whatnot. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's super cool. So, thanks so much for the tour. Um, if there's anything else you want to add that maybe I didn't touch on, um, feel free to add it. Sure. Yeah. Or we can chat down down on the ground level. <laughs> uh, yeah, ignore all rumors of Slab City and Rainbow, okay? Everything you see on YouTube, you're just, people have misconceived notions of how it really is. And yeah. You should check stuff out more yeah stop believing everything you hear yeah the, the, the <laughs> reason for yourself man the, guys the reason i wanted to talk with shane and some other residents was to show you guys what is beyond the salvation mountain what is beyond the east jesus what is beyond the rumors what's beyond the tourist attractions and talk to the people who actually live here because you know what they're really really nice and actually i've had some of the best hospitality i've ever had in the united states right here so, Absolutely. yeah, so That's thanks for the tour. Why I come back year after year. That's yeah. why I come back. I made some of the best human connections in my life here. And uh, Rainbow Gathering as well. Yeah. And, uh, All right. Cool. Certainly better than the ones on the streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Now, I got to figure out how to get down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see from the video, there's a lot more than what meets the eye. There's more to Salvation Mountain. There's more to East Jesus. There's cool people like Connor off to my left here. <laughs> there's, there's the people, you're not on the video. There's people like Cy, there's people like Shane. There's all these characters out here. So get out of the car, drive past the Salvation Mountain, say hi to people, walk around the neighborhood, introduce yourself, ask before you take pictures, bring socks or gold out here, bring some sugar and coffee for the people at the Oasis Club and just bring a smile and I, I promise you, you will make some friends. You'll have a good time out here. So thanks so much for watching the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Oh, and also I just want to thank all the Slab City residents for the amazing hospitality. Uh, had a fantastic time. Claire did too and we'll catch you guys the next time I roll through town. Bodies on consignment, return them to the circus. And what is the purpose? What is the purpose? And what do you believe in? Would you believe if you knew what you were for and how you became so informed? Bodies of animals performing such miracles. I am a miracle made up of particles, and then this is I'll stay persistent, I'll make a difference, and I will. I'm into it, I'm into it, changing management, whoa, whoa. And there are various ways to conquer this monotonous, the job is the stuff, and this is falling, but the feelings is talking shit, and I'm wide awake, wide awake, and I'm sick of names. Do you speak to me like you speak to God? All the love and understand, who take the Father and the Son? Do you believe in the perfectness of where you are? This is my people, this is my truth, this is the land that I would fight for. Solidarity! Musical medicine around the planet in a hurry Cause there's no time to wait Gotta wake up my baby Stop and stand up and say We know what we are for And how we became so informed Bodies of info Forming such miracles I am a miracle 
made up of particles and in this existence I'll stay persistent and I'll make a difference and I will live this I love Transcend the holy makeup. I am capable. I am powerful. The day that I don't wake up and transcend the holy makeup, I am on my way to a different place. The day that I don't wake up and transcend the holy makeup, I am capable. I am powerful. The day that I don't wake up and transcend the holy makeup, I am on my way to a different place.